Latitude zero, longitude zero. Speaking from the center of the world, Ghana. This is where we are. This is the center of Pan-Africanism. Moving black people forward, uniting us on the same platform, telling the stories that concerns us. Boom! <laughs> Zoe TV talking points. Do not change the dial. Stay tuned. You have bows and arrows, but I have a, a bit of an edge because I think that I'm, you know, in, impenetrable. I think I'm invincible. I think yes. I'm impervious. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to fight with a certain type of edge that's going to actually allow me to win. So it yeah. becomes what's referred to in education as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. So that one can be in play when you have armies that are similarly armed, that have similar levels of skills, similar understanding of military strategy, tactics, and so forth and so on. But it doesn't come so much where you actually have this primary outcome variable, which is power. And in this case, it's expressed through gunpowder. So again, in that case, they mowed down the people. They shot them by the hundreds, by the thousands. And then those who they didn't kill directly with guns, they used a famine. You know, people know about Biafra and how you know food was used as a weapon. Yeah. The Germans like burnt down the crops burnt down the fields, made sure that those who didn't, and you know, it said that the majority of the people ended up dying after the fact due to starvation. Yeah. And again, that was reinforced by the, you know, the guns that they had, the machine guns that they had that were able to enforce that. So, you know, these are the things that we actually have to look at that if we are saying that, you know, let's return to this, let's return to that, we need to actually look at what were the uh, times that we've done this before and what are the things that we're doing. And then also, you know, when we're coming together, it's not enough for us to come together if we don't have the power to do something. Yeah. It would be like saying, oh, all the snails need to come together against the foot of an elephant. Well, yeah, you can have unity among snails, but the, that unity among snails, and I get that from Nachin Wezu, one of our elder scholars, you know, the unity among snails doesn't do much against an elephant. So now how can we look at, okay, well, well then what can be done in order to build up the power? And again, the power occurs on various levels. There's a book called Blueprint for Black Power, and this again for Black Power by Nana Amos Wilson. And this ties into the Black Power Conference that I mentioned earlier, September 6th to the 8th at Abibi Tumi headquarters, which again translates to Black Power. So when you look at this, there are different levels of power. One is through force, and it categorizes this as the lowest level of power. Why is it the lowest level? Because it always engenders a response. So if I know that you're trying to force me to do something, then I'm going to fight back. But now, you know, even deeper than force is what if I just use uh, influence or coercion or competent and legitimate authority or manipulation? So coercion is I'm, I'm not going to use a force, but I'm going to threaten that I'm going to use force. Now I can get you to do my bidding just like if I use force, but now with less resistance. Okay. Because now you think, okay, well, I don't want problems, right? Don't rock the boat. Okay, I'll just do what you say do. And this is how they forcibly conscripted, you know, people in what's now Ghana yeah. to do, you know, yeah. work on mines, on farms, and so forth. Yeah. They use uh, coercion because they realize if we use force every time, they're going to fight back. But if we use coercion, now they're just going to be scared and they're still going to do the bidding. But then influence is a deeper level of power because influence is now... I use my position, I use a psychological way that you view me in order to get those exact same things accomplished, whether it's working in my gold mines, working on my farms, being conscripted into so-called World War II. I can now use my influence in order to do that. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, um, I still want to bring the audience back to yeah? the, the, the African spirituality. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you look at Ghana, mm -hmm. There are so many shrines in Ghana mm -hmm. that is, you know, place of traditional worshippers. Do you, is there any authentic shrine in Ghana? When okay. I say authentic, um, I think you know what I mean by authentic mm -hmm. because quite a few times people will go to, there's a lot of people parading around saying that, mm -hmm. you know, they are spiritualists, they are da da da, they are blah blah blah. And um, I think some of them are scammers, mm -hmm. some of them too are con artists. Mm -hmm. and some shrines too are the same mm -hmm. just like the way we have a lot of christian churches mm -hmm. with a lot of scammers uh, scam pastors around is there authentic shrines in ghana the next level of power that i was mentioning is competent and legitimate authority this means if i say that i'm the pope 
and I'm the direct, you know, channel to which, you know, the supreme being is channeling these messages, or I'm a prophet, or I'm whatever, now you're going to do my bidding because I've said that I'm the competent mm -hmm. and legitimate authority. I'm the head of the uh, Church of England, or I'm whatever it is. Now, this is another form of power where you're not going to get so much resistance because you don't even know that this person is, you know, getting you to do these things. But then the highest level that he categorizes is manipulation. Now, the manipulation, you don't even know whatsoever that anything is going on. So all they have to do is have an image of a Bruni Chinjinga. And now all of a sudden you start saying, you know what? I want to start perming my hair. And you don't know why you want to start perming your hair. Yeah. Now, you've seen the image of the Bruni Chinjinga and Mary and all these imaginary yeah. white people. Color colonization. Exactly. And you don't know why all of a sudden you want to start bleaching your skin. You don't know why you want to have nose surgery to make your nose look like a beak of, yeah. you know, a, a bird or something like this. Yeah. So this is the manipulation. Now I can just put symbols and images in your environment. And now I can get you to work on my behalf. And this is the way that they were able to infiltrate is by just a Bruni Chinchinga image, yeah. right? The Jesus image was one way that if you can convince people that the only begotten son of that which created everything that exists looks exactly like the one who's enslaving me, colonizing me, raping me, lo lobotomizing me, sodomizing me. They look exactly alike. Yeah. Well, now am I going to fight against you or am I going to go along and say, oh, there's no chance that I can fight whatsoever? So this is also what they would do is that they would get some of these people, usually on the outliers of society, those types of people. And they'll say, you people are saved. Everyone else is a savage. Everyone else is a heathen. Everyone else is a pagan. So now you can get these black people, manipulated black people, mm -hmm. to fight on your behalf. Okay. So now you don't even need to use gunpowder because yeah. these black people are going to use the gunpowder on your behalf yeah. to crush the savages, to crush the heathens, to crush the pagans, and so forth and so on. And again, that's through the manipulation. So this ties back into the spirituality because... Again, you have this idea of how are they going to be able to do this? How can they how can they defeat us when we have these shrines on there? And again, there's the uh, proverb that says evil enters like a needle and spreads like an oak tree that they get in just through these small means. And, you know, there's, you know, stories about how the Presbyterians, they tried for decades to come and they didn't get one single convert. But then they brought in a black person from the Caribbean. Uh, and we're talking about here in Equipium. They brought in a black person from the Caribbean. That's where they started to get converts. And now if you go to Ekrapim, you'd think it'd been Presbyterian since time immemorial. Yes. But we literally know the time that they came in. And it was through the manipulation that they were able to accomplish those types of goals. So that goes all, you know, power ties directly into what we're talking about in terms of the spirituality. Yeah. So right. then in conclusion, what we're trying to say is most of even these our holy places, shrines, have been manipulated as well. They're not all treated. <clears throat> Yes, for certain. And I actually did a presentation about the colonization of the spiritual realm. The colonization of the spiritual realm. Right. Now, how was that done? It was done by colonizing the minds and the bodies and the spirits of the people themselves. There's a proverb that says, um, Right. Um, oh, I'll say, translate say, that. Say, say, translate, translate. So it translates to if the Okonfo, which would be the traditional spiritualist, the healer, diviner, yeah. if that person is foolish, then the Obosum that the person has is also equally foolish. Yeah. Now, how does that play out in reality? So an example of this is in schnapps and whiskey and rum and gin and all of these things. If you the go to a shrine... The rum, uh -huh. gin, we can, go, we can yeah. go on a list of every type yeah. of thing. Yeah. The champagne, the Amarola, <laughs> we can go down the list. Okay. But there are certain abosom who only will take whiskey. Yeah. There are certain that only want schnapps. There are certain that only want gin. There are certain so when you say abosom, what's the meaning? Because so abosom translates to divinities, what we will call deities, deities divinities. Yeah. divinities. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's abosom. And again, it goes, you know, Vodunsi, different languages would have different names. Yeah. But I'm using that as a catch-all term for the Urisha, so forth. Okay. Now, once you're able to colonize the tastes and desires of the Okomfo, of the one who was practicing the spiritual system, mm -hmm. you're able to do the same thing to that person's Obosom because once I have a taste for it, now the Obosom also desires a taste for it. Oh. So if you look at schnapps, for example, this is out of Holland, you know, Netherlands, it's yes. Dutch, yeah. so forth. Now, if you look at this, before you can even go to any traditional ruler, 
you have to bring two bottles of schnapps before you go to a shrine. Yeah. You have to bring two, however many bottles of schnapps they tell you to yeah. bring. But this is this is this is this <coughs> this thing that we're talking about is much in context to Ghana, right? This, this is in Ghana, but it, it recurs all throughout. There are places that have it even worse than Ghana, okay. but I'm in using Ghana. African yes, country? yes. Okay, where and they also demand exactly. all these foreign drinks exactly. that they used to pour exactly. like exactly. for the ancestors. Exactly. Oh, so it's yes. not only Ghanaian. I've thing. been to Benin, they do the same thing. I've been to Nigeria, they do the same thing. Oh. You know, all over, you know, okay. and again, if you look at the degree to which anyone is using, you know, this, these Eurasian drinks, that's the degree to which they've been colonized. Okay. So you, you still have some people who may still use other things. But again, once you can see this going on, right. and again, this is just one example. I can give other examples that are pertinent yeah, yeah, yeah. more so to other countries, but let's just stick with the yeah. liquor example. Yeah, let's take this. So this is, again, created taste and desires. So there's a, a, a quote from the instructions of Patao Tep, which is known as the oldest book. And it says, uh, He who listens to his belly belongs to the enemy. There's also the proverb. So, so what, what, what language did you use now before this? That, that's what they call medu in medu, terms of the medu writing medu system. Also called ro and kemet. That's what people would say is the language of classical Egypt, ancient Egypt. Okay. Again, it was called kemet at that time. Hello, viewers. You know what? You know, um, this man is pouring a lot of knowledge out over here. And um, we'll come back. We'll do a different segment with him so that we can capture the, you know, catch, capture all the levels. Otherwise, we're going to miss a lot. So... We are on African spirituality by hearing and there, you know, he comes up with all this sort of like language. He's a language master because he's in Ghana here and he speaks three more than me. When I say he speaks three more than me, I mean it like the guy can speak three, like flawless, like no English in it. Like, you know how me and you, oh, we speak one tree and then there is plenty, about 50 English in there. No, 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 he doesn't go that route. English. Yeah, tree English, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't go that route. So, um, it was quite funny the way, you know, he, he, he kind of mentioned that and then I asked him, he said, oh, Meduneta. Mm. Meduneta. That's the writing system in the row and Kemet is a spoken language. Okay. And that's the language of classical okay. Kemet. So, we'll come back, we'll come and do Kemet on its own. We'll do Meduneta on its own. You know, we'll do a, lo a whole lot of things. So, stay tuned. Do not change the dial. Zo TV Talking Point, an African channel. Afrocentric vibes, my man, let's continue. All right. So again, this is the same thing that was echoed by Nana Thomas Ankara, which says, he who feeds you controls you. Yeah. This means the one who is able, as Nana Amos Wilson said, to manipulate your tastes and desires yeah. is able to conquer you because the only one who can fulfill your tastes and your desires is the same one who planted okay. that taste and that desire in you yeah. in the first place. So we are still at the, 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 the spiritual um, the, the colonization of the spiritual realm yeah the colonization of the spiritual realm exactly where your tastes <clears throat> get changed mm -hmm. because of even as you give you the examples the drinks that mm -hmm. you know we use the schnapps the gin mm -hmm. the rum and all that now that's what that's where we yeah. are but but let me let me just land on the yeah. point if, if yeah. you allow me yeah. so you know now you'll have once the people have a desire for it because we know at a certain point in time, no one demanded schnapps because the, the Dutch had never come here. Yes. So the question becomes, well, what were we doing? Yes, what were we doing before exactly, the Exactly, before the schnapps. Yes. And now that's where you actually start to practice your own spiritual systems because you go to what it was we were doing before it was adulterated by all of these types of things. You know, similar thing, you know, previously we would use uh, shire, right? Yes. Um, okay. Ayilo, I think. Ayilo, yeah, uh, but they call it shire, as well, they call it Ayilo, I think. So that one is, you'll see that the idea is that in the spiritual realm, you know, here we are black. In the spiritual realm, they're all rubber ishtere. So you'll see someone gets possessed. They'll put this white clay all over their body. Okay. And it lets you know that so they're opposite. So is white clay. Okay. Right. is white clay. Right. Yeah. So the idea is those who are living are black, but then those, once they pass on, they are encoded in this, you know, whiteness. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing exists in the Kikongo language where the word kala translates to charcoal and that's representative of birth, right? But then luvimba is represented by impemba, which is the same word for the white clay and that's representative of death. Okay. Now we have it backwards. We think of death, now we need to wear black and then we need to wear white at the naming ceremony for a child. Okay. But that's the exact opposite of how we used to see it. Okay. And you still see the evidence of it that anytime someone is saying, oh, I'm coming from the spiritual realm, I'm possessed, I'm, you know, so forth. They'll rub all this white powder on them mm -hmm. to let you know that th I'm, I'm dead. I'm in the realm of the ancestors. I'm in the realm of oh. the spirits so because the spirits the are the opposite of who we are. So funerals actually mm -hmm. were supposed to be white. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's how it always used to be. Matter of fact, when my father passed away, the in Sumanqua Hene, the Equape Mampo, he took the shire and he placed it inside of the fundaka, the okay, casket. Okay. And that is again symbolic that this is representative of the ancestral realm right. to which my father has now transitioned. So the white clay is quite very powerful. It's very powerful. Not only is it powerful, I remember I was walk watching a documentary about uh, a type of bird called the Macaw. And it was there in uh, Congo, you know, modern day Congo. And what those birds would do, they would be able to eat berries that are poisonous, even to them. They're poisonous to them. But they, what they would do, they would fly to the riverside and they would swallow this white clay. This white clay has adsorbent properties. Mm -hmm. It means that any of the poisonous toxins and chemicals are able to adhere to the white clay. And then when they expel it, they have no problem. So they're only getting the nutrition and the nutrient from those berries. And then anything that's toxic goes out and it's still used, you know, in that way. So, you know, if you start to have stomach problems or stomach pain, this is why you'll find different shops that sell their shire in these yeah, small because things. Because Ghana here, a lot mm. of pregnant women, yes. they eat the white clay yes. a lot. They yes, the yes, lot. yes. And yes. sometimes I wonder why they like eating the shire like that. And again, but it has those adsorbent properties for any type of toxins and other things. Oh. They're able to be expelled yeah. both through the, you know, defecation, you know, so forth that you're able to only absorb nutrients from anything you eat but you know anything like food poisoning all those types of things we actually use this in our household so anytime the children are like oh i have a stomach problem okay we'll use the, either the shire or the charcoal okay. which again the charcoal represents the birth yes and then the shire represents you know the death yes, i use charcoal a lot yeah but i have never used um uh, shire in it is used the same way my mom sells shire mm. yeah my mom sells yeah. So, so that has the adsorbent properties again. So, you know, now people will use baby powder. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look, Johnson & Johnson just had to make a settlement for somewhere over a, a billion dollars because the baby powder that all these Ghanaians use, you can't find a, a Ghanaian woman who doesn't have baby powder that she's going to, mm -hmm. that it was found out that this has asbestos in it. It's, it's a carcinogen. It literally causes cancer. It causes death to the point that they can't even sell this thing, you know, in markets yeah. over there. But they're not going to shut down the factory. They're just going to send it to the land of black people because they know that we're fools. We're idiots. We don't study. We don't know what's going on. Yeah. So they're not going to, you know, shut down the industry. They're just going to send it to us. So again, we had something that brought about life like the pito. Mm -hmm. So if you look up fermented foods, yeah. there is life-giving properties in terms of the gut, the mm -hmm. microbiome, yeah. from having things that are fermented like pito, yeah. like in sefu. But we've taken what gave life yeah. and replaced it what brings about so, death in yeah. the liquor. So if we're talking about all this, you see that going back to African spirituality is mm -hmm. not only about spirits, mm -hmm. but it's about the, the holistic view. There's an economic people. component to it as well. Put, well, how they call it, everything that got to do with us as people, African spirituality has it. Mm -hmm. Because what we're talking about here now in terms of food we eat, what we drink, they're all part of us. Mm -hmm. And if we change hands, if it changes hands too much, <clears throat> it affects us. Yeah. And so, this is this is the whole point that I'm driving at is that in each one of those cases, this is now talking about manipulation. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it comes back to that point. So once the people desire the schnapps and the gin and the whiskey and yeah. so forth, now you'll find that the abosom is also requesting for those things. You uh, understand? This is what I'm talking about, the colonization of the spiritual realm. Okay. Now, you know, in previous times you have the shire, which brings about life, but that's been replaced by the baby powder, which causes death, right? So the shire, how, how did they use it for the, for, for the libation? Did they, you know, smash the powder form and put it in, um, in water? So usually, okay. so you find that the biggest organ is the skin, and usually it's applied through the skin throughout. I know if you've been to any quote-unquote spiritual ceremony, you'll see people who are yes. coated all from head to toe, yes. you know, through this. So this is how it gets into the skin. Another thing that, you know, people would do is called akam, and I have some here, yeah. which is where they make these incisions, mm -hmm. and then they'll usually put charcoal inside. Yes, so I, I, have, I have some too. Exactly. Yeah. So shire is usually applied topically. Yeah. It can also be ingested. The charcoal can also be applied in that way. It can also be applied topically. Sometimes you'll see people who are coated entirely and that in is, a black. And that is libation. Hmm? It's libation no, it's, it's well, not the exact same thing as libation, libation but, uh, right? But it's another way in our spiritual systems that all of these elements are used. Okay. And again, the point that I'm driving at is what used to bring about life is now replaced by that which causes death. 
So now you'll be at some type of ritual, some type of ceremony where the abosum is asking for baby powder. Yeah. And as soon as the baby powder gets on the skin, the Okonfo, when the Okonfo turns 60 and 70, they will die of cancer and they don't know why. They'll say, fear baby for. But they don't understand that Johnson & Johnson have to settle a lawsuit because what you're putting on your body every single time you go to a ceremony is causing cancer because you don't know that white people are your enemies and they're going to keep doing things why, that kill why don't, you. Why don't the deities, mm -hmm. the deities, you know, counter back? Like, mm -hmm. if, if, if you have a taste, mm -hmm. so you are the priest of the shrine and you have a taste for schnapps now or mm -hmm. rum or whatever it is, and, and, and so now you want to give the same thing to the, um, to the energy, mm -hmm. Why don't the energy, you know, uh, you know, either reject it or fight back and say, so, you know, why, you know, how come you want to change to this? Right. So the energy is the collective power, the mental, the mental power, the physical power, the social power. It's the collective power of all the people. So if all the people have colonized mindsets, colonized tastes and desires, the obosum is just a reflection of all of those people's energies right. coming together. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, when you think about a corporation, corp is body. This means something that doesn't exist, but it's coming together. So if you look at Apple, for example, Apple is basically an obosum, right? It's something that doesn't really exist in terms of an entity like where is Apple Corporation that exists? No. This is Steve Jobs and all of these, you know, white people and then the black people who are also working for them who are coming together in order to do things. It's a similar thing in terms of a shrine. The shrine is all of the people, the abosom, the elders who are there, so forth and so on. All of them have energy and the degree to which those people are colonized is the degree to which the collective of all of that energy that's been put together is also colonized. Yeah. So, so now, because, because if you go to any shrine now, mm -hmm. You know, like in Ghana here, they will ask you to go and bring schnapp, yes. or they will ask you to go. They don't ask for the local drink mm. anymore with the petition. Mm -hmm. Now, if you turn up and you give them a petition to use, will the energy accept it? They, they have accepted that, so I've, I actually do that. So when I go to shrines, I'll bring Ensefu, I'll bring Pito, I'll bring these things. And I always bring it with an explanation because they don't understand. Because not only do they want schnapps, they want the schnapps that comes from Holland. Yeah. They say it has to be in the clear one now because, you know, they don't want the local one. Yeah, yeah. This, this is how colonized the people themselves are. Yeah. And then that is, you know, tantamount to the colonization oh. of the spiritual realm. Okay. So, you know, this is what you actually find. So when you go to those places, this is what they're doing. They're saying, we want the foreign one. We want this. We want that. But when I go there and I bring the Encephal, I explain to them, these drinks that you're asking for are the drinks that were used in order to kidnap my ancestors. Okay. So it doesn't make sense for me to yes. say that even to communicate with my own ancestors unless I go and enrich my enemies before I can even communicate with my ancestors. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But again, you have people who are doing things that they don't really even understand that you know don't even make sense to them. The but they're doing it because I it's held down. There's any authentic shrine. Mm -hmm. Because I realize that when you go to the shrine sometimes... You get confused a little bit when you have authentic product in your hand made in Ghana. Mm -hmm. The drink was brewed over here mm -hmm. and everything. And they tell you, oh no, we want schnapp or we want kasapreko this, we want that, we want that. And you go in your head, yes, but you know, all those are foreign drinks. So mm -hmm. how come our ancestors only just want to get mm -hmm. foreign drinks mm -hmm. but don't have drinks from here? Mm -hmm. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I mean, the angle at which you came from, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that? Okay, you can use the petit sheet, you can use the pitou, you can use the palm wine to do all this. And, and this is what we are using can, before they came. Yes. So we know it can be And used. you can use the schnapps mm -hmm. and it will still be the same. Will it so, still be the same? Yeah, so what people look for, they, they look for results. So they don't care about, you know, these things that we're enriching our enemies. That literally the billions that we've sent to Holland is what they've used to pave their roads. The billions we've sent to Holland is, you know, what they've used to build skyscrapers and have infrastructure and so forth. Literally, Ghana alone, before we even look at Togo, before we look at Cote d'Ivoire, before we look at any other place, Ghana alone has sent enough to build their entire economy and economic infrastructure and so forth and so on. Ghana by itself. Now, imagine that I'm going to the Obosom and saying, oh, I want prosperity. But literally, to even communicate with the Obosom, I've given all of what I would use to have prosperity yeah. to the very enemies who I'm fighting against. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But again, people just want results. Yeah. So if they say, I want to have a child, and they say, bring me this you know, drink or whatever, and then I end up with a child, then I don't care. 
Yeah. And that's the mentality. Yes. And this is exactly yeah. why we're in. This is why our roads aren't paved, but the roads in Holland are paved. Yeah. This is why we don't have skyscrapers. They yeah. have skyscrapers. Yeah. Because they're able to use the collective energy. And when I say the energy, you know, it comes in different forms. Because, like, I've been talking about money, but money isn't the only one. My father, this is Nana Kamal Kamban, had this term called terms. This is our time, our energy, our resources, our money, and our spirit. Okay. So this is now a much more comprehensive thing than just looking at the money side. Yeah. But we spend our time and we give it to our enemies. Yeah. We spend our energy giving it to our enemies. Okay. Our resources, our money, and our very spirit, yeah. we donate all of that to our enemies. And we have very little to show for it, you yeah. see. Yeah. But again, this is what happens when people's tastes and desires have been colonized by having that implanted into you. Yeah. And then once that's implanted into you, everything else that you do, it serves your enemies ultimately. Yeah. I know um, you've been through a um, few countries in Africa. Mm. Do you find any country in Africa here where their spiritual systems is way more stronger mm. than, like that, than say Ghana mm. and maybe Nigeria? Well, you know, what, what African country do you think that they've maintained their spiritual system that it has not been too much washed down or been taken over by Christianity? So, you know, I've been to Benin and Benin is renowned for, you know, having traditional spiritual systems as one of the, you know, religions that's recognized and so forth. Um, and I, when I went there, I was expecting to see no churches or any of those things, but of course, mm -hmm. there are churches there as well. Uh, I've been to, you know, an Alba, you know, who was there, that's like an Ohenny, mm -hmm. who was pouring libation with, you know, this Eurasian liquor that we've been talking about. So I see, you know, similar things, but I think it's basically a matter of degree. I remember some years ago, I went to the Dogon people of Mali. Mali okay. Now, the Dogon people are renowned for not only the, their spiritual systems, but their knowledge of astronomy and so forth and so on. Okay. And that time, I had read conversations of Ogotameli, uh, the Pale Fox, you know, other things I was familiar with. Okay. Um, you know, the work of certain elders uh, who had written books about the Dogon. the Dogon. So, I was expecting to find, you know, some... Just for the purpose of the audience, where, where are the Dogon Yeah, the Dogon from? people are located in what's now modern-day Mali, uh, mainly southern, southeastern Mali, and northern, northeastern uh, okay. Burkina Faso. All right. So, you know, I to went masters there... Masters of Astronomy. Yes, Masters of Astronomy. Okay. Um, because they have these uh, festivals that take place in accordance with how long it takes for Sirius B to go around Sirius A. And they have them going back. Um, it's like a 70-year period. They have them going back from the time before non-black people even knew that Sirius had a companion star. Uh, but we'll come back to that point. So I'm thinking, okay, let's go to these people. They're pristine. They're untouched. I want to find these people. The Dogon people. The Dogon people. Okay, cool. So I traveled with uh, two other brothers of mine who we were in school together. So we went to uh, Ouagadougou, then to Bobo Gilasso. We took a side trip out to Bamfora. All of this is in Burkina Faso. Yeah. Back to Bobo Gilasso. And then I we went Bobo. to... Been yeah, we went to Bobo. Yeah. Then we went to Mopti Sevare. We went from Mopti Sevare to Bandiagara. And then from Bandiagara, we went to like the Dogon Cliffs, the escarpment. And when you get there, it's not an easy trip. Oh. So yeah. you go there, there's not even a road there. You're just traveling to along. To go to the Dogon people. To go to the Dogon people. The, the, okay, so it's a, small, it's a small settlement. It's not even Population really small. There, there's a, there are a lot of Dogon people, yeah. right? It's, it's not a small settlement per se, but there wasn't any type of infrastructure. I'm talking about 2000. Mm -hmm. I haven't been back since then, but maybe they have a road there. But literally, you're just driving on this, you know, basically barren land, just like, you know, this red soil. And you're in a car where they don't have air conditioner. So it's kicking up this dust. And by the time you come out, you look like a Martian. You're entirely red. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then when you, when you get to that part, you're not there yet. So, you know, you take your bags, you put it on your head, and you start climbing up a cliff. Yeah. And, you know, that may take you another hour. Once you get to the top, you're not there yet either. Okay. Because now you have to go maybe, down. Maybe you have to organize a tour, a spiritual tour to, yeah, to, to, yeah. to the people of um, uh, the Dogon. Uh, Dogon. Right. You right. know, led by Obadale Kambon. I think I'll be, I'll sign up. Number I'll, one. I'll be up for it. Okay. I'll be up for it. Okay, okay. Keep watching Zoe TV, man. You know, this is authentic. This is pure. Coming right from Zoe TV house. You right. can't get it anywhere. Stay tuned. So, you know, now you get to a valley and you, this is where they do the agriculture. And I had read about how they do things in terms of squares of eights because eight is very significant for the Dogon people they talk about. The, the number eight. The number eight. Very significant. They talk about the eight original no more and these types of things. Um, so I was able to see, you know, this is where they have the irrigation system because in between these squares is where they pour the water and they're able to do 
irrigation, but you go there, you're not there yet. You have to walk for say another hour and you're still not Whoa. there. Before you have to climb up another cliff and you're still not there yet. Then you have to just keep walking and walking and walking until in the distance you see, you know, a small village. And as you're walking, you're walking, you're walking. I remember we got to the edge of that village and there was a man who came to greet us and he extended his hand. He says, hi, my name is George. Would you like some Coca-Cola? Oh, good. After all that. <laughs> he says, I'm the chief here. Would you like some Coca-Cola? And he said in English, right? He said, would you like some Coca-Cola? You know, they speak French days. He said yeah. in English, I guess, no. All right, these are English speakers. He says, oh, and if you like... You all that? Yeah. Those kilometers. Yeah. Coca-Cola offer. Oh, Coca-Cola offer. It says, if you like, you can pitch your tent in front of the church. The white people are already there. So the white people were there waiting for the festival to get started. And they pitched their tent in front of uh, this church, which is made of Atakwami. It looked yeah, like Atakwami yeah, yeah, yeah. church with a little cross, Atakwami cross at the top. Okay, so, so this is spiritual colonization. This is spiritual colonization. Okay. So, you know, again, we're looking for these pristine people. Now, what I can say is that there are degrees. So, again, you can get, you know, shrines where everything is just com like the only thing that's uh, black in the shrine is you who's sitting there. Because the Obosom wants candies and cigars and the snacks. The Obosom in Dogon. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm back to Ghana. Okay, you're back to Ghana. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. I said, you can go to a shrine here, and the only yeah. thing that you find that's black is you sitting there. Yeah. Because every single spiritual implement is coming from there. Yeah. They want the white calico cloth that yeah. comes from somewhere. They want the snaps that comes from somewhere. They want candies. The Montia want candies that come from somewhere. Yeah. Every, everything in there is made yeah. by white people. Yeah, so um, every yeah. part of us have been colonized. In the colonization, not only of us in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm. And the way to get to the spiritual realm is get to the people because the people are a reflection in the Dogon, uh, you know, the Akan, the Yoruba, wherever you go. That the spiritual realm is a reflection of the people and the people are a reflection of the spiritual realm. So they're not separate from each other. So if you are a colonized people, you will have colonized Obosom. If you have colonized Obosom, then you'll have colonized people. The people will demand for snaps. The Obosom will demand for snaps. The people will demand for baby powder. The Obosom will demand for baby powder. But again, we know logically that they couldn't have demanded for baby powder before baby powder even existed. They couldn't have demanded for snaps before snaps even existed. They couldn't have demanded for uh, cigars and cigarettes. You'll see the Obosom who are smoking cigars yeah, yeah, and cigarettes. Yeah, you, know, you hear about the dwarfs smoking mm. and all that. That you couldn't have demanded for that. So... Back in the day, if we wanted something that had smoke, mm -hmm. it would be frankincense, mm -hmm. right? So we would use that, and that also has psychological, you know, effects. You can actually look at the psychological effects of the burning of frankincense, okay. that it has calming effects and other things that actually deal with the uh, neural system. However, you, you replace what used to bring smoke that brought about health with the smoke that brings about lung cancer. Mm -hmm. You see, so all of those things we looked at, we replace the fermented drinks that bring about life mm -hmm. with the liquor that brings about liver disease, kidney disease. Yeah. You replace the shire, which brought about life, mm -hmm. with the baby powder that brings about cancer. Yeah. You replace the eshe, which brings about life, with the cigars and cigarettes that brings about death. So this is essentially what we're talking about, is that for these non-black people, so-called white people, they not only want to kill black people, they want to make money off of our slow demise. That is in all, you know, these examples that we've just laid out. Yeah. That not only are they killing us, they're actually depending on us to commit subtle suicide, yeah. as Baba Kamal Kamran would say. And in that, they're actually enriching themselves yeah. off of the colonization of the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. How long have you been on this journey? Because, you know, you're pouring a lot of knowledge out here. And it is not just waking up two, three days to be able to acquire this. Mm -hmm. How long have you been on this spiritual Jenny. In many ways since birth, because both of my parents were what you would call conscious, you know, black people who knew who they were. We grew up, you know, with the Swahili language. We grew up with our own names. So sometimes people will ask me, oh, when did you change your name? They'll find out my name is Abadele. Oh, you must have changed your name. I was like, no, I was born with this name. Let me interject yeah. again, because somebody's watching and he's listening to you, but he still doesn't know where you originally moved from to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So, um... Where were you? Yeah, so I was born in the United States in a, a place called Brooklyn, New Brooklyn, York. Yeah. And then I was raised in North Carolina, outside of Raleigh, okay. North Carolina. Then I went to school in Atlanta, and then in Madison, Wisconsin. I taught in Chicago before I came here to do my PhD. Okay. 
So I've been here since 2008. I completed my PhD in 2012. Okay. And I've been at the University of Ghana officially since 2014. Okay. I'm on sabbatical now, but yeah. Okay, so when you do the numbers now, you started the spiritual journey in America before you came to Ghana. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, again, being born into a family that had, you know, sense, you yeah. know. My mother herself is an Okomfo. Okay. And she makes her own, you know, this is another one. They have what they call Florida water, mm -hmm. which when you look at the ingredients, it has, you know, blue dye, red dye, like all of these carcinogens, yes. things that are known cancer causing things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you'll have the abosom who say, bring Florida water. Mm -hmm. I want Florida water. But what she does is that she makes her own out of flowers, right? So these were the types of things that we did before the Florida water came. Okay. But now, again, with mommy water and all of these other things. And interestingly, mommy water came about through, there was this... Uh, before, before you go yeah? mommy water, does mm -hmm. mommy water exist? That's what I'm about to go into. <laughs> he said, before I go into what I'm about to go into, yeah, let's go into what I'm about to go into. Yes no, so, 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 so let, let me come directly to this. Zo so, TV talking points. Do not change the dial. Stay tuned.